Open world RPGs not only have a terrain and items to interact with, they have a player. And that's what this video is going to be focused on. We're adding a very complicated, a detailed player to start out to make life extraordinarily difficult. I'm lying to you, your player is going to be a box, literally a 3D cube, and that's good. We want to focus on movement and where, not just the ability to move and manipulate a character with input, or a box for now, it will get cool, but also what limits that movement. Can they hop on a roof? Can they go up a really steep hill? We're going to bake out a... We're going to bake out the map to make sure that our character can only interact with our world in ways that we want them to. With all that being said, let's... Oh, assets are in the description as always, completely free to use. Let's dive in. And now that we have a good working world, let's get a good looking player. Well, let's start with a working player and then looks, maybe. All right. That being said, pow, back into scene here. And focusing on functionality, right, let's get stuff up and running fast. Actually, real quick, let me do a bit of cleanup. I'm going to do a create empty here, and I could put some thought into this, but I'm going to call this outside. And let's throw our trees, all of this, yeah. So all of this outside elements, we're just going to outside, or I guess I could call it environmental elements, something like that. Trees, goodbye, and I could even throw terrain in there. Yeah, that all works. Speaking of terrain, so for movement, we need to specify an area our character can move. And, well, we haven't done that yet. We have this whole big open world, but we haven't said what is interactable with what uh, is movable. So to do that, I'm going to head to navigation. I already have this open, but let's just magic that away. Oh, look, I don't. So I'm going to go over to window. And then I'm going to head from window into AI, because it's artificial intelligence that's going to help us navigate. Ooh, navigate in Quipao. There we are. All right. First things first, we're going to need to bake it. And I'm going to leave it at default and just go ahead and click bake. Pada. And blue. Oh, no, I'm in Smurf land. Everything's around. Nope. This is what we need. So these areas that aren't covered by this blue stuff, that means they're too tall or their their slope is too much for our character to walk upon right now. And we control that, of course. So what if I put this at 20, for instance, just kind of showing you what's going on here. Oh, wow, it couldn't walk up the hill at all. All right, so I'm going to set that back at 45. And there's even more of this that we can dive into, such as setting the voxel size, which is the size of the individual shape that's getting carved out here. So if I set this to 1, that's a really big chunk for a voxel size. So what if I do this now? And you can see how large then the area has to be to exist. All right, so I often leave this at a default or close to it, unless uh, some of our buildings get wrapped up into this. Now, speaking of buildings, you'll notice that they appear not to be acknowledged whatsoever. And we probably don't want our character to be able to walk this close to a building. It would not be good. They would be halfway inside of it, right? So. To do that, to make sure the game, I say, hey, hey, you game, don't don't let them do that. I'm going to go ahead and select these objects. I'm going to do it all at once. So I'm going to hold shift and give me all of these guys. And I'm going to click object now. And I'm lying. I'm going to click inspect now. And I'm going to set these to static to let the game know that these are objects our characters shouldn't be passing through. Now, we could set individual parameters here to static, but now just navigation. But usually if you want them static, you want all of them static. Uh, the treasure chest we might come back to in a bit. But for now, we're just going to leave it all at static. Because we might use this as a carve out. Okay, now that these are all at static, let's try baking. Boom. And you see what happens? Now there's this area around them that the character can't get close to. Which is good. We don't want them walking through or halfway through a wall. Other things that happen. Sad story here. Now, if our, our user was going to click on a roof, the game might attempt to take the player to these roofs, right? Because these are now navigational or navigable spaces. So we can do a few things. For instance, our voxel size is at 0.3. The minimum area is 2, which is pretty small. This is a really open level right now, right? So maybe, what if I set the minimum area to 25? Let's see if this makes a difference. Whoop! And you can see, now we're saying if there are not 25 connected squares, Get rid of it. So no roof slit right here. That's not going to work. And I don't know. These other spaces look pretty large. Yeah. So it looks like these, we could just keep going up. 
But what I might do instead is another route to handling this. I do want these as static, but for this guy, I'm just going to head over to object here and say I am Woodhouse, which is what that is, right? I don't want it to be walkable, so not walkable, right? Or, oh no, that should be fine actually, jump. Okay, so not walkable, and same here, not walkable, right? And that's, the, yep, and look, it didn't do anything. No, it totally did actually, it's kind of annoying, but we got a fake, boom, and that takes care of those. Okay, so we now have an area where our character can walk in, we just, we don't have a, a character, dude. So let's add it. Um, and again, keeping it simple, our character is going to be your friend of mine, a square. Now, I'm not going to leave it as a square. Don't worry. We have something cooler to add. Um, but for now, let's just get the functionality in here. So 3D object cube. Here's our friend, the cube. You might get real fancy and call the cube the, I just hit F2, player. Hi, cube. My name is Kurt. Thanks. It is a small cube, it is a friendly cube, it is a cube. I'm gonna reset the transform because it's good practice. There's our cube. So maybe, just for the heck of it, I'm gonna double its size so I can see it. Getting old here, and grab it. Okay, there's our cube. So, we need this cube to move, and not just like, no, real movement, right? And to do that, we also are gonna, oh, of course, we're also gonna need to do a mesh on it. A, maybe I did that too fast because I had the word. We're going to need to add a mesh, a nav mesh to it. So if I just type in here, I guess, nav mesh agent, because it's going to be an agent of it, it will allow us to assign it. Yep, it's going to be a humanoid as our character, and this is going to allow it to navigate the area with the navigational mesh. That being said, I can do the same if I don't want this object to be static. Maybe I want this to be something our character has to dodge or weave around on the treasure chest. I can do the same thing, except a nav mesh obstacle. And now I just say carve out. And I kind of want to show you. It's, I think it's cool, at least. All right, you see how it's right here? Watch what happens now. Troop, troop, troop. It gets carved out as we move it around. So it's live movement. Um, and I can rebake this now that it's not static, so it kind of knows what's up. Okay. Let's throw a bit of code at our block to get us in business. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and click at our on our block, which is uh, obviously our player for now, and add a component. And I'm going to call this something really fancy, like the word movement for our script. New script, and thank you. A uh, bit of cleanup here. Head over to assets, create folder. Scripture, movement. Um, since this is only going to be used with models that color palette, I'm just going to throw it in there just to keep things nice. All right, script and movement. And we have a blank canvas. Well, eventually. But uh, all right, before I forget, because I will, we need UI in there. So this is great. I'm going to just copy that line and paste it and do dot ai because when you think about the nav mesh and baking it it's ai now i write ui and i go back and fix it but i promise ai all right if we need we need to make sure we're we'll use we need to make sure we're referencing that all right what else do we need well we're gonna need something that's gonna guide our player to the cursor so this isn't gonna be on start initially right we're gonna need to check the screen constantly to see if the player or the user is interacting with it. So that's going to be update. Update runs constantly to allow us to do that. So many times a second, it depends on the speed of the computer, honestly. So I have update. Now, what do I need in it? Well, how movement is done in a 3D game is through rays. Kind of like lasers, but not as cool. I don't know, maybe more cool. When I click somewhere, what the computer does is, where's my camera? See this camera? What the computer's gonna do here is looking through the camera lens, it fires a laser, basically. Like, not basically, that's what it does. So it fires, I'm not gonna move it for now. It fires off a laser, say I click here, and from the camera's perspective, it goes zzz, And once it runs into an object with a navigational mesh with uh, a structure on it, it knows that's where I'm trying to go. 
because it can't a computer can't really see the space right so if i click here well do i mean the ground do i mean the sky it just keeps going until it hits something oh they mean this and that's how it knows where to go what it shoots out to figure out that point on the xyz axis to navigate whatever towards is a ray and it's what we're going to be using to navigate and move around our character our first mission will get our character to follow the mouse and then we're going to implement a click system so let's do ray ray creative with names as always we're going to be equal to the camera dot main and we're going to go screen point to ray input and this is already built into unity because they're nice to us the mouse's position so hey camera grab that mouse input give me the ray that that is returned from a mouse input so give me where that mouse is and then ray cast no two this is yelling at me ray cast hit this is built in as well and then let's do a full in has hit this is pretty standard terminology physics dot ray cast ray comma out hit so again, this camera dot main screen point to array, that is going to return a ray going from the camera to that screen point we interacted with on um, mouse movement. What this, oh, physics, fun. That's a new spelling, I guess. Uh, what this physics is going to return is true if the ray has interacted with the collider. So, hey, did we hit something? So the second we start moving this mouse, the rays will start firing and it's going to check, hey, have you hit something? Did you hit something when you moved? Did you hit something every time? The mouse is moot and well that's what we need to know because if we hit something then that's a valid move and we want to get that character that fancy dancy box over to there so has hit let's go ahead and get the component what component well we're on our character remember we want to grab its nav mesh agent navigation uh nav mesh agent destination hit point let me see what's going on here oh obviously i meant ai ui Oof. ai artificial intelligence it was from my bad joke earlier all right there we are this should take care of it let's go ahead and save all of this save 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 and give it a try let's do some basic movement so and this is looking like victory and see i don't even have to click because it's firing rays right now every time we move the mouse i can click but it doesn't matter it's going to go that direction anyways so that leaves well let's actually implement click this can be kind of wild without click to move that's looking great it's definitely following our mouse let's go ahead and add the component so it will only do so on click and we can do that let's go ahead and function this up so let's do a private void uh, move to cursor. And I'm going to grab all this, cut, paste. And then on update, we can just have a simple if statement for the mouse. So if input dot mouse, not mouse position this time, mouse button down, what button? Well, the left button. So that's actually button zero. And if it is down, and only if it's down, we can do the move to cursor method. Now it will only have that character movement if they're actually clicking. Save all of that. One more shot. We can even bring up the camera smidge so we can see a bit better. And maybe I'll rotate it. Bit of a better view. Try. Boom. And now we're only moving on click. Can we hit the cabin here? And you see it's going around the cabin. Pretty cool. Next up, although hide and seek is fun, well, I guess it's fun. Let's make it so the camera actually follows the player. And we're going to be tackling that in the next video. So, you know, we can move around with our player and, and see what's going on. It makes sense. Next video. That. Cool. Onward.